Hi, my name is Eric and I'm with uh, JM Turbo Coopers and this is part one of how to kill your turbo quickly. Uh, today we will be talking about the most important part of a turbo change and that is replacing the oil supply line. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to talk about some of the components in a turbocharger. Here uh, we have here, this is the, the piston ring, uh, and it's a seal. This is a very important piece. This right here, you have two snap rings, and these help hold the turbo turbine in place, and, and as well as keeping it keep the turbo shaft in place. And here we've got the uh, thrust collar. We have the bearing journal. We've got the thrust bearing. We've got more snap rings which hold the, the turbine in, in place. We have the turbine wheel. And we have the exhaust turbine. So as I said earlier, the most important thing after changing after changing a new turbo is to replace the oil supply line. Here is the oil supply line. It will cost you possibly a hundred dollars, right under a hundred dollars from the manufacturer or dealer and you can even buy it at various uh, other vendors. So what the problem is is on this turbo, on the turbos you've got extensive heat. Here's a, here's an exhaust housing. So you've got exhaust gases flowing through this and and in excess of 900 degrees Celsius. So boil, oil boils at a lot lower than that. So what happens is, is the oil will actually begin to coke or stick to the inside of the turbo. As you, if you look at this used turbo housing, which is similar to all the ones we get back, you might be able to see that there's oil coking inside on the output for the oil. There's also oil coking on the inside for the input for the oil. Very important. So this oil supply line sits on top of the turbo, right here like this, and it's exposed to the hot gases of the turbo and the exhaust. The turbo is water cooled, but still it gets oil, it still gets oil coked. So what happens is when you break this free, you take a nut off top off the top of the oil supply line and disconnect it from the input of the, the turbo housing. And when you do that, you're actually creating a segment between the, uh, the oil coking inside. And the oil coking is kind of a gel. And the oil coking is made up of burnt oil and particles that are left over in your oil. I don't know if anybody's ever done this before, but I've mixed gas and oil together. And if you let it, let it sit, you've got a sediment, a pool of particles in the bottom of the gasoline that you put the oil in. And they're pretty big particles. So that is, the, that is what's, coke, that's what's sticking to the side of the walls of your uh, oil that's coking in here, in, inside your engine, and inside your, uh, your uh, oil supply line and turbo housing. And left, left untouched, you'll probably never have a problem with it. But here's what, here's what happens. When you, when, it's not, when you do disconnect the oil supply line from the turbo. So to understand it, exactly what happens is we have a bearing, bearing journal right here. And your oil, your bearing journal is inside of this, this housing in the center here, right about here. So these holes line up with the oil feed right here, inside of here. So the oil travels from the oil supply line and into the, into the bearing housing and into this bearing journal. And inside this bearing journal, you've got this, uh, this turbo shaft. And this turbo shaft fits over this bearing journal. And the oil will actually go through this little hole. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but there's a little hole and what it does is that once it passes through these two little holes, uh, it's under 40 PSI, which is about the normal for a uh, gasoline engine, and it creates a suspension, and it suspends this shaft inside of this, 
bearing journal. And I, I don't know if you can see this, but if you look inside, it has rifling on it. And the rifling is there to help hold the oil in suspension around the shaft. So it, it's constantly lubricating the, the shaft. So what happens is, is these holes are pretty tiny and the chunks of uh, oil coking that can flake off are pretty big. So they will actually block this hole. So as I was saying was that when this hole is blocked, the uh, oil film that is around, around the inside of the bearing that keeps the shaft, the turbine shaft in suspension will actually dissipate or reduce or change. Maybe it won't be as thick on one side. And when that happens, your turbine gases will actually push the turbine shaft around and it'll touch this brass. In this, this, this case, this is exactly what happened. We had a turbo shaft that was not lubricated properly via either a blockage or something like that, something along those lines. And what happened to this particular turbo and bearing was that this turbine shaft was spinning at high speeds and it it locked up on this um, thrust journal and spun this thrust journal. Journal. What happens when you do that is you probably you will expand the metals and the metals will will lock up eventually. And this turbo was probably spinning at 65,000 RPM. So what it do? It sheared off the turbo, the turbine off of the turbine shaft. And um, right here, you really can't see it. But if you were to compare this to a known good one, there's about uh, a good eighth of an inch of uh, metal that was cut off from this spinning in here. And that's where the, the turbine shaft sits. So it was spinning around in here. They call that the death rattle. It kills the turbo, it kills the exhaust, it kills everything. Fortunately, you've got an aluminum uh, compressor turbine so it didn't kill the kill the compressor this is salvageable but you basically took a thousand dollar turbo and turned it into a uh, fifty dollar core part in one shot in addition to that um, we can see if we look at this um, thrust bearing here is that the 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 bearing journal actually was spinning so fast that it pushed up into the, the thrust bearing and did a little damage, if you can see that right there. It was so much pressure that when this broke off, it was forced into the compressor housing, locking up, breaking off the shaft, and totally destroying this turbo. The turbo is basically junk. You might as well throw it away. You can't even really get that much out of the core. So to recap what we said, this will cost you $100. If you, uh, if you don't replace it, you just blew up a new turbo, which is $1,000. Plus, you've got to do the install, which is probably at least $500. Plus, which is one of the we'll be covering in the next segment is uh, oil dumping into your cat, which will also kill a turbo quickly. So you could possibly spend about uh, $4,000 for not replacing a $100 oil line. So that was uh, part one. Next week, we'll be talking about part two, and that will be replacing the cat after a turbo failure. Same, similar scenario, different, uh, different problem. Thank you. Bye-bye.